Hello and welcome to this Darktide build guide. I wanted to upload this video a lot sooner, but as far as I know, this build still works and I still use it, so better late than never. Moving on to the actual build itself, I like to call this build the Spell Sword Psyker, which, as the name implies, is a melee focused Psyker build. This build is damnation ready. I run this in Auric Damnation, I beat Maelstrom missions with it and I beat the Karnak Twins boss fight on the hardest secret difficulty with this build as well. Unlike every other melee focused Psyker build that you might see, this one's not based around Disrupt Destiny. We instead take the Empowered Silence Keystone, and this is to help kill critical targets like Elites and Specials a lot quicker, which gives us more time in melee combat against things like Hordes. Moving on, let's cover the Sword of the Build first, as that is the most important part of the build, and we'll also take a look at the other weapons and then get into our actual skills and talents. So for this build, you want to take your choice of force sword. I personally prefer Elisi. Uh, many view it as current best force sword option. I like the fact that for your special attack, it doesn't stick. You can kind of just cleave straight through a horde with it. But really, you can go with whichever force sword you like the best. So the most important part of the sword is going to be the blessings that we take for it. First, we're going to want to take Blazing Spirit. This is going to synergize with our talents we pick later and give us some great crowd control options. In addition to Blazing Spirit, we're going to take Shred. Shred's going to give us a lot more crit, which is going to let us proc Blazing Spirit a lot more. It's also going to synergize later with the Empathic Evasion skill, which is going to be really important for this build. For perks, I like to grab 5% crit chance just for more crit. And then personally, I like 25% more damage against Flak Armor, but you can do whatever you want for the fourth perk. For our firearm, you can really take whatever you want. It's not going to hugely affect the playstyle of this build, as it's not really the main focus. You're mainly going to be using your sword and your psionic abilities. I personally, though, like to run the Stub Revolver, as it gives me some really good burst damage in a pinch. If I'm fighting a lot of Maulers, it's nice to pull out. You can also definitely take a Search Staff for more utility, or a Laz Gun for taking care of enemies that are far away. It really is preference, but you can kind of test and play with what you like. With weapons covered, let's take a look at our perks for this build. Starting off, we're grabbing pretty much every single perk at the start of our tree. This is really important as we do need to be as tanky as possible. Psyker is very squishy. Soul Stealer, Quietude, Warp Expenditure, and Middle are all going to help work to get our toughness back. Perilous Combustion also works with Blazing Spirit really well, which is going to help us increase our damage. For our Blitz, we are going to be running Brain Rupture. This lets us kill elites and specials that our sword can't reach, or elites and specials that are too dangerous to get close with. Things like Maulers, Crushers, and Armored Rangers are going to be perfect targets. Really far away snipers are also ideal for a rain rupture. Connect Flare also gives us some nice RNG kills, and that's going to help us kind of deal with cords and deal with elites. Taking it to the left side of the tree also gives us a Wildfire, which again, combos with our sword that has Blazing Spirit. Once we're done with this, we move to the right side of the tree for prescience, for some more crit, and to help proc all of our abilities. After that, we take Empathic Evasion. This talent is super important for this build, and allows it to essentially function. Because as long as we're in Scryer's Gaze, which we're going to take in a second, and we're in melee combat and have targets, we're going to be constantly critting, which is constantly going to make us immune to gunfire. You can sit there and have a whole horde of gunners unload into you, as long as you keep swinging, you're good to go. But with Scryer's Gaze and all of our perks, we can get around a 55% crit chance, which honestly keeps Empathic Evasion up quite a bit. So obviously, as I just mentioned, we take the Scryer's Gaze, very straightforward. It works really well with melee weapons and with your gun as well. The Keystone, as I mentioned before, this is where this build, very different from other melee circuit builds you may have seen. Almost every single one I've seen online runs Disrupt Destiny, which I also initially decided to run for the melee circuit build because on paper it seems like a logical choice, movement speed, more crit, makes sense. But in reality, I found that if you're on anything harder than Heresy, you often spend more time with your gun or with your uh, blitz out taking care of your marked enemies in order to get your stacks up rather than actually focusing on, you know, dealing with the horde or into melee combat. As you can see in this footage, all the marks are really spread out. In Damnation, I also found, especially in high intense Damnation, that it's not as consistent. It's a lot harder to keep your marks up. It's a lot harder to actually gain those marks because you're busy dealing with, you know, 
threat of death rather than hunting down what you're trying to kill. So now that we covered why we're not picking this for Destiny, Empowered Psionics is our next best choice, which is our first best choice in this case. Although it's counterintuitive because it has nothing to do with your melee combat, by buffing our Blitz, we can take care of those Crushers and Maulers, Faraway Snipers, Grenaders, anything that's a problem really easily. You can two-shot Crushers and Maulers, which makes it a lot easier to engage in melee combat if you can take those out first. And it's really easy to get your charges back if you're constantly just in a horde sling on your sword. You constantly get those Empowered Psionics charges, and you can constantly just pull out your Brain Burst, kill a target, pull your sword back out, and go straight back to slaughtering. Something to note, for a lot of Maelstrom missions, we can actually switch a Bio Lodestone to Empowering Souls and back. You really want to choose what's ideal for the mission you're doing. Empowering Souls is great if you know you're fighting a lot of elite specialists. Bio Lodestone is really good for just lots of people. Alright, so for this build strength, it's an excellent all-arounder, and it's got ability to deal with most threats in some way. Combining our Flaming Force Sword with Squire's Gaze makes really quick work of forwards, and it really feels like a Zealot in these situations. Since making this build, I've actually almost entirely stopped playing Zealot because I just don't feel the need to. When fighting groups of armor enemies, if you're running the Force Sword Elysi, you can actually use your special attack to get some crazy cleave and damage for these groups. The main issue is if you are also combining this with Squire's Gaze, you have to be careful because it is really easy to barrel. Brain Burst also works really great against armored targets, and in multiple situations we can treat Empowered Psionics kind of like our ammo counter for Brain Burst. We have three uses, we can use it three times. Killing Maulers is really quick in that case, and then we can just go ahead and swing with our sword once they're out of the way. Your gun really comes in as a backup for situations in which your Brain Burst or your sword aren't ideal. As mentioned before, I run the Stub Revolver, because it really does let me burst down scary elites, or lets me kill elites and specials that I don't want to waste time using my brain burst on. Ragers and small mounts are pretty easy to take care of. You can use the force sword block ability to knock them down, and then just hit them with some charge swings. You can also always brain burst them at a distance pretty easily as well. Thanks to empathic evasion, we don't have to worry about gunfire while dealing with the horde. If you do find yourself in a situation like this, uh, this is the best time to use your gun in Brain Burst because you can't really get close and the uh, gunners will cut you down if you don't have targets to swing at. Downsides to this build. Well, the fact is, you still are a Psyker, which makes you very squishy. Maulers and Crushers can one-shot you, so you need to watch out for your audio cues and watch out for those swings. Large groups of Ragers, especially Armored Ragers, are also really dangerous, but that's dangerous to most people in most situations. If you see them coming ahead of time, Brain Burst a bunch of them down, and then hopefully you can finish the rest off pretty easily. You can also knock down Ragers and Maulers, and that can help in these kinds of situations. For bosses, this build is not designed for killing boss around bosses. The build has very high damage just naturally, but it doesn't work as well against a creature like a boss or a monstrosity. In these situations, what you want to do is you want to just make use of your brain burst and your gun as much as you can. If they do come at you, you can kite the boss pretty easily with the speed boost from Ferris Gaze. And kinetic deflection lets you block them without using stamina, which is super helpful. Typically in a boss fight, what I do is I empty my gun, empty my brain burst, and then I work on support, taking care of specials, elites, and the horde while our bigger boss damage dealers can take care of the boss. Alright, that's pretty much the build explained. Hopefully you found this guide somewhat useful, and hopefully if you were looking for a comprehensive Psyker melee build, this one scratches the itch you were looking for a lot better than the other ones that are on the internet. Although, I am not a dark tide YouTuber, if you did enjoy this video, consider checking out the rest of my channel, and maybe subscribing. Also, if you have any thoughts or any questions regarding the build, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks!